Are you sitting comfortably? Join two lifelong friends, Dan and Steve, as they embark on an incredible hike through one of the last wilderness areas in all of England and Wales, the Cambrian Mountains. Let's go. So I thought I'd tell you a bit about the route before you see myself and Steve actually tackling it. Let's do it. So apologies that I'm filming this on my laptop. The uh, OS map software, no matter how much I tried, just I just couldn't get it to upload. So this will have to do, I'm afraid. But it was still it was still did the job. If you're uh, if you're heading from the north, then you need to look out for this little town here, a place that I cannot pronounce, I'm afraid. But you'll see it clearly signposted, and then you're going to head for this small road here. It should be signposted towards the village of De Life, which you can see down here. And it climbs pretty much all of the way. And you're going to park just past this amazing viewing spot here. Some great views looking back towards Snowdonia. If you're coming from the south, then you're going to come from this little town here. Up the climb, again, towards the same village of De Life. Okay, so there's that amazing viewing place that I showed you in the previous bit of the video. Your parking spot is just around here. This is where we left our car. You might actually be lucky and you might find there's some gates there and if they're open, you'll be able to take your car a bit further down the route so you can save yourself a kilometre or so. But when we started, it was locked. So we parked it here and we headed down towards Glaslin Lake. To be honest, as soon as you leave the car, things are already pretty wild. And, to, and you'll already feel like you're probably the only people around for miles. So yeah, head, head past Glaslin, keep following this route on and eventually you'll reach Brugelin Lake and you'll see, notice a little boathouse on the northern shore as well. Beautiful spot, and you might want to sit there and just, if you've got a bit of food, it's a nice spot there to sit and have a bit of lunch. If you're going to keep going, you want to follow this path here. Again, the views from here are absolutely amazing. You know, it's big sky country, just vast views, and it's completely empty as well. You'll see no signs of civilization whatsoever. Incredible. And you'll be looking out for the distant forest, because this is where you're going to be entering next. In fact, this is a plantation. It's not a natural forest. And there are many of these across the Cambrian mountain region. You'll go in for about a kilometre and a half and then sort of turn south. Before you know it, you'll emerge from the trees and be greeted with the amazing views of Hidgen Valley. Again, you'll notice the river, the river just meandering its way south. Just follow that until you cross a bridge and then you enter what I consider to be the real jewel of the walk. This is the Hengwin Valley. Absolutely stunning, stunning place. And you'll see there's a path marked to the south but actually this has a habit of just disappearing and it can get pretty boggy even in summer so make sure you're prepared make sure you've got good boots and make sure you've got gps as well because it's quite easy to get lost here but it's well well worth it it's just so beautiful we stuck to the southern side of the river and followed it up just because it got a bit narrower and it was easier to ford you will need to do that at some stage we crossed around here and in fact here the path is a bit clearer and then it's quite easy you just there's a bit of a climb here quite rough in places but before you know it you join this path here and then it's just a case of retracing your sort of steps back towards the car you know it's quite a long walk you will be tired but it's so so worth it even when it, even when you're near the end it's well worth just turning and look at back looking back at what you've accomplished you'll be quite proud of yourself Hello, it's Daniel here. I'm having so much fun in the mountains. Unfortunately, there are no restaurants around here or toilets, so you have to squat in a bush. It's okay. You can eat the grass in here. Well, here we go. Here is my brilliant walking companion and the only person that I have seen in the last three hours. Absolutely amazing. This is Steve. If you enjoyed my last video, you'll know that this is the man that told all of you to go to other videos and don't watch this one. But hopefully you're realising what a cracking place this is and what an amazing walk this is as well. Steve, roughly how far have we gone so far? About seven, we're about seven miles in. We reckon it's going to be somewhere between 12 and 13 miles by the time we get to the end. And we've stopped for a bit of food because we're pretty hungry now. 
and we've reached, I've been raving, raving about this valley all the way around. I believe this is called the Hengwim Valley. I know a couple, it's, not, it's rarely visited, but a lot of people that do have the, well, the, the joy of coming here say that it's one of the best places in Mid Wales, one of the most beautiful spots. I'm sure you'd agree. It's cracking. And it might be the middle of summer, it might be a Saturday, but there is no one around for miles. One of the reasons why I absolutely love the Cambria Mountains and why it's such a special place. Anyway, I'm going to stop with the sentimental stuff. We're going to finish our food and we're going to tackle some of this. I think it gets a bit boggy, so we're going to tackle that and we'll see you a bit further up the valley. Myself and Steve are currently negotiating what is called dancing grass <laughs> and it's got an earnest name because I tell you what this is why the Cambridge Mountains are there's nothing here because you couldn't possibly live on this or build on it it is very hard terrain and it's hard going we can see a path we're not far from it we're going to keep battling on and hopefully the going will get easier soon but if this is a brilliant walk but just beware that on this little, this little bit of the valley it does get hard As you can see again, there is no path. And I thought this was all going to be really, really boggy. And I might eat those words again. It might end up being that way. But at the moment, this ground, I thought I'd stop because this ground is absolutely amazing. I'm sort of going to come down a little bit and I'm going to try and show you what I've discovered. So if I stand on this, you might, hopefully you can see, it's basically, I don't know, it's really, really, there you go, there's a classic, there's a classic one. It's just really, really bouncy and soft. See, I'm tempted to dump all my stuff here and just sleep here like a natural bed <laughs> absolutely incredible don't know why it's like that but hopefully more of the same will be great all the way to that waterfall I pan around I've come across another little ruin here there's, there's another one a little bit further up and it's just I mean I've got no idea what it was used for I guess it might have been a uh, I don't know a shepherd's hut possibly at some stage maybe maybe a sheep hold I don't know but it looks like it's probably more likely to be a bigger building and just what an amazing place to have a home. It's just incredible to think that at some stage, somebody lived here. And I mean, it's lovely even tonight, but you've got to think that we are, at the moment, about 400 metres up. So you think the winter, the winter's here, even, even today with all this global warming, would still be pretty extreme. Back when people lived here, my goodness me, what a tough way of life that would have been. It is an absolutely gorgeous even so far. And if I come round again here, you'll see, but hopefully behind me, that waterfall. Right, since the last time I filmed, myself and Steve have come a long way, but we've not been filming because I tell you what, this has turned out to be a bloody tough walk. I know I've titled this one of the best walks in mid Wales, and for the most part it is, and if you want an adventure and you like a whole range of terrain, it's great. I can tell Steve's going to say something here. Come on, Steve. <laughs> so, so if you like, like Steve's a trail runner, so if you like sort of good trail running terrain, yeah, I'd follow Steve's advice. If you, you know, if you know this camp, this area well, and you know about the, you know, the, the tussock and like, like fording streams, we've been doing it all, honestly. It's, uh, it's been really tough and we are both knackered, but it is an adventure. And it's one of those things, I know Steve is kind of sort of saying, I'm like, it has been really hard, but it's one of those walks we'll remember, I guess, because of how hard it's been. We're back on the path now, and, it, and the map does say it's, it's a clear path all the way back. So uh, I'm going to stop it there. I kind of just want to get back to the car now. We've been on our feet, well, I don't know, something about four and a half, five hours already. So uh, yeah, time to get back. Four and a half hours, there we go. <laughs> but seriously, I, don't, I know Steve says, like, you know, it is, it is really bad and it is hard. But if you don't mind a bit of off-pathing, <laughs> off, off I was going to say off-roading, but off-pathing, off then... Uh, and maybe getting a bit wet. I mean, poor Steve. He ended up in a bog, fell over. It's just thankfully, you know, he didn't hurt anything. But, uh, if you don't mind that. And here we go. We're going, uh, we've got another little adventure here. It's got a bit of everything, this route. That's not too bad, Steve. I don't actually care anymore. There you go. <laughs> right, anyway, let's stop there. Let's just get this done. Here we go. We're taking a breather because, as is pretty typical of this walk, the paths there, you probably saw that in the last bit. And then it wasn't. 
I mean, we've got this amazing view now, but we've just literally climbed up here and we followed a path that, well, literally, it's, thank God for Steve, because he's, he's got GPS and we were following that. Without that, you'd really struggle. So if you quite think about doing this, make sure you've got, you've got GPS, you know exactly where you're going, because you can't rely on the paths. But we head in the right direction. I think we've got the worst of it's over now, so we're going to turn around. It should all be pretty much downhill from now. Let's go. All right, guys, so the walk's nearly coming to an end. Thank God. It has been amazing. It's a walk that I definitely recommend. And if you want to read a bit more about it, I've included the link below, which will take you to, look, to an article that I've written. And uh, hopefully some details. Steve's got a GPS, so uh, hopefully I'll be able to include those details as well. But yeah, it's been incredible. And I will say, Steve here, he's never been to this part of Wales before. You know, we are, we're, as I said, we're in the Cambrian Mountains. I've bigged it up so many times to him. I'll leave the last word to him. So, Steve, I mean, what have you made of this walk and what have you made of this area of Wales? Certainly unspoiled, certainly very beautiful, but it's uh, incredibly barren. In bar in barren, in, what do you, when you say barren, what do you mean by that? Well, we haven't seen a single person in like <laughs> five and a half hours. Yeah, so on the people front, it's, it's amazing. You know, you think it's, uh, it's the middle of summer, it's Saturday, yeah, and not a single person seen. But if, that, if you want solitude, you've got it in spades here. It's incredible. You know, these places still exist. And Steve even sort of said it's, he said it's sort of, without trying to sound sort of too cheesy, it's sort of, it affects your soul a bit because you kind of, we're not, you know, if you're from a city, you're not used to this sort of, this amount of solitude. You just don't even think it exists anymore. So yeah, very special walk, but not one to take lightly. You know, you need to make sure you're fit, make sure you're prepared. And that definitely means a GPS because these paths that appear to be clear on the map sometimes vanish. But uh, thanks for watching guys. I'll leave the very last word to Steve here. Any last words? Yes, subscribe. <laughs> what he said. Cheers, guys. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.